It's being called America's first snap election, to quote Politico, at a moment when presidential campaigns traditionally formulate their closing arguments, Kamala Harris is still making her introductions. But with two months to go, and traditionally, the time voters really start tuning in, the vice president faces a big challenge. NBC Steve Kornacki is at the big board digging into the numbers. Okay, post Labor Day, the beginning of the end, we traditionally look at it in politics. Where do things stand? Yeah, let's take a look at it a couple of ways, Chris, here. So nationally, what you're seeing here, this is the average of the polls nationally. Kamala Harris with a three-point advantage over Donald Trump. You could look at this a few ways. From the Democrats' perspective, certainly they're happy to be ahead. They're also happy that this is an improvement for them from where Joe Biden was. He was basically trailing Trump in the polling all year. From the Republican standpoint, though, they could take solace in the fact that Donald Trump is no stranger to being in this position at Labor Day. In fact, this three-point gap that he has right now. That's actually better for him than it was in 2016 when he ran against Hillary Clinton. He trailed by five at this point. Trump, of course, went on to win that election. 2020, Trump trailed Biden by even more, almost double digits around Labor Day. Trump didn't win the election, but of course, he made it very close in the Electoral College. And that really becomes the question, the road to 270. We're going to be giving this a lot of use in the next 63 days. In gray, you see them here. These are the core battleground states. So from Harris's perspective, what would be the most efficient way, the simplest way, the cleanest way for her to get to 270? Again, all sorts of possible paths on here. But when you look at the state polling right now, the first thing you could say is all of it is close, a lot of it very, very close. But the Democrats are doing a little bit better uh, in call them the Great Lake states of Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. So if Harris were able to just carry those three states, all of them went for Biden in 2020, and just for the sake of argument, if you turn them blue now, you see what it does. It would bring Harris to exactly... 270 electoral votes. Now, if she starts losing these states, she needs to compensate for it in some of these Sunbelt states, and particularly the one of these three the Trump campaign is investing right now the heaviest in is Pennsylvania. Now, if Trump were to get Pennsylvania, two things would happen. From Harris's standpoint, she would then, because Pennsylvania is the largest of the swing states, it would take two states from the Sun Belt for Harris to make up for the loss of one Pennsylvania. But also, if Trump were to get Pennsylvania, that would open up for him what is his simplest, cleanest, most efficient path to 270. It would simply be this. Get Pennsylvania, hold on to North Carolina. This is the only one of the core battleground states that Trump carried in 2020. So if he hangs on to that, and then Georgia. Georgia went for Biden by just under 12,000 votes, very, very narrow in 2020, had gone for Trump in 16. If Trump can win Georgia back with holding on to Carolina and flipping Pennsylvania, suddenly it's Trump who's at exactly 270 electoral votes, Chris. All right, Steve Kornacki, thank you.